appearance or their skin color. Right? That's what a racist is. So when you hear this term thrown around out in the news or, or the newspaper or wherever, and they say, well, this, this person is a racist, and you're like, how can that, that person, I'm not a racist. I don't judge people based on the color of their skin. I mean, this is the classic Martin Luther King Jr. I long for a day when, when my people are not judged by the color of their skin. Right? We would agree with that. Sure, we should not be judging people based on the color of their skin. Okay, there's nothing to see here. But then somebody calls me a racist and I say, well, how are you defining that term? Oh, well, you're one of the group that owns the vocabulary, so you're an oppressor, and if you're an oppressor, you're a racist, regardless of the color of my skin. So that's why you can have the black face of white supremacy. People like Clarence Thomas uh, or Candace Owens have been, those phrases have been used of them because they're, they're African Americans, but they stand up for, for the oppressor and therefore they are racist. Um, this is where the phrase white supremacist comes from. Why, why, can we, why do we have white supremacists? Why are we white supremacists? I mean, white supremacy used to have a, a, a definition. We could point to it. But now everyone is a white supremacist, and this is because in the Western tradition, uh, the European tradition, um, basically Caucasians have been the ones who have owned the vocabulary, primarily Christians. Uh, in, the, in Europe have been the ones who have owned the vocabulary and because of that they are now white supremacists. So these are power words. I call them power words. And so the goal then in life is to flip the power. So whoever has the power has to be dethroned and, it, and the opposite, as much of the opposite as you can get, has to take over that place of power. Now, you can, you can already see the problem with that. Uh, well, there's lots of them. But one of it is, well, as soon as you flip the power over, the people underneath, the oppressed, have to do what? Have another revolution where they flip it back over again. And then the people underneath have to have a revolution. Revolution is the key word. And they flip the power back over again. And human history is this fight over power. Now, none of this is Christian in its thinking. But this is where our world is today with its, its attack on words. This is why it attacks words uh, and it attacks language. This is why it comes up with these power words. And Christians, I will, I'll state, need to uh, avoid at all possible using the power words. Okay, because it's giving in to this view of the world, which is not a Christian view of the world. So cisgender, does anybody know what cisgender is? We're all cisgender in here. Do you know what cisgender is? Okay, so I'm cisgender. According to the power word, it means I'm a man who thinks he's a man. Okay, that was easy, right? Um, but remember, the truth is in my head. So even though I, I'm a man, Objectively, there's no objective truth anymore. There's no world out there for you to look at. You can't look at me and say, well, you're a man. You, you can't do that. Because that, you know, you, that's in your head, and that could be wrong. Whatever's true is what's in my head. Um, the phrase anti-racist doesn't mean that you're against racism. Okay? It means that you are for racism but for racism that is for the, the quote-unquote minority or the oppressed. I can't use the word minority for the oppressed. Um, woman. Does anybody know what a woman is? <laughs> Probably all of us. Uh, there's a great documentary on this by Matt Walsh. He's a, Christian, a Catholic conservative. He did a documentary on, called What is a Woman? If you haven't watched it yet, I would recommend that you do. My uh, Olivia has watched it. A group of them watched it at the college at uh, St. Mary's. But um, I haven't seen it all the way through. I've probably seen the whole thing, but I've seen it in clips. Uh, but he goes and asks people who hold this worldview, 
what a woman is. And then he just basically lets them talk. Okay, and it's, it's very interesting to hear what they say. Uh, one of them won't even, look, won't even classify the gender of a hen. If, uh, if a rooster wants to pretend he's a hen, who are we to, um, to debate that? Um, diversity. So diversity is an interesting one. Because in business, a long time ago, in business, uh, diversity was considered a good thing because you wanted, again, kind of going back to, oh, can you save me, Jeremiah? I clicked in the wrong, wrong direction. Uh, thanks, whoops. Um, diversity used to mean um, something like, okay, we'll get a little farther here. So diversity would say, hey, we, the world is knowable out there, and we all know it, but we, have, we come to it from different ways, and we can learn from each other. Okay, that's what diversity used to mean. And when you hear diversity, it's probably what you think of. It's what I think, you know, would think of normally is, uh, yeah, it's, it's people who are different, come from different backgrounds. We get together, and uh, we talk about something other than ourselves. In the church, of course, we talk about the Word, we talk about Christ, and we, uh, we come to a better understanding of the truth by our conversations with one another. Okay, that's diversity. We're good with that. Well, that's not what diversity means now, okay? And even under this form of postmodernism, diversity was very similar. We can still have a conversation with each other. In this form of postmodernism, which is what created this now word diversity, um, you get you, what they say is we're devoted to diversity. We want a whole bunch of people who have different opinions on a topic to be able to express those opinions. Well, so far that's fine. But remember, there's no objective reality. So who wins? How do you make a decision? If everyone's opinion is equally true, but at some point, two opinions are not going to be compatible, then who wins? It goes back to power. What, what we want is uh, somebody needs to make a choice as to who's in power, and then that is the truth that all other people must bow to or humble themselves to. Um, th this, is pretty, this is pretty vicious. This view of postmodernism was not nearly as vicious because you could still have conversations with people. You could witness to people. You could ask them questions about their spiritual journey and they would tell you. And then you could say, can I tell you about my spiritual journey? Or, and they would say, sure, go ahead, I'll listen, because why? Because we could have conversation with each other. This one, this view, I gotta go the right direction. There's no talking with each other. So what we have to do is pick uh, whichever viewpoint is considered the most oppressed. And the most oppressed viewpoint is the one that we have to go with and everyone has to follow it. So you can see how, how practical this gets in the world. We live in the state of Minnesota, and our governor, Governor Waltz, holds to this view of reality. And therefore, this type of, of thinking, um, though it's inconsistent because, why? He's a white man married, who thinks he's a man, who uh, comes from a Christian tradition by his own admission, however loosely defined, um, and he has all the power, but he holds to this worldview that he should be the one who has the least amount of power. He's the oppressor. And so what does he do? He does things like, well, I'm going to have a woman lieutenant governor. Or I'm going to have these, this diversity on this board, like the Minnesota State Board of Trustees. Uh, we, we have to have diversity on that board. We have to have all this representation. Um, we have to do all those things. And of course the problem is, he, if he really believed it, should step down. 
Joe Biden does the same thing. President Biden does the same thing. What should President Biden do? He hired a, a vice president who was, uh, well, she's not African American, but uh, a woman of color who, uh, who was no good at her job because she was the most oppressed. That's why Kamala Harris is the Vice President of the United States. It's the only reason that she is, and she knows that. She's admitted that recently. Uh, so it has absolutely, but if Joe Biden really believed what he said, he would step down. Um, so no one wants to give up power. So language has become nothing more than power, and as Christians, we have to we have to avoid it. And I was going to use an example that has happened recently in Christianity, but we're out of time. Um, where this this actually slipped into a sermon that uh, a, a man was giving at a conference, an evangelical conference. A lot of people that we would probably even know and agree with in doctrine, um, but they uh, it, this slipped out of his sermon that uh, our if our congregations are not diverse, uh, then we are disobedient Christians. Um, and people went, what? Um, you mean, and this is, this is the ramification. We have a Karen service this afternoon that's 99.9% .9 Karen. He would say that that was, this preacher would say that that was wrong. Um, and that's this kind of thinking sl slipping in. So this radical postmodernism is attacking words. And as Christians, our Christian worldview says that words are the foundation of the way that God has created the universe. And they're very important. And so we want to, re re we want to refuse to use these power words that the world is coming up with. Um, and, and lots of other things like, you know, telling the truth is important. Um, okay, so I kind of ran us out, out of time there. But any comments or questions? Any questions, Joanne? Okay, and we're you know welcome to continue talking about it after class too. That's fine. So, all right. Well, let's close in prayer, and we'll be done. Our Father, we are grateful for the Word of God, which um, has taught us how you have communicated your truth to man. We pray that you would, as Christ prayed for us, sanctify us through your word, because your word is true. We pray that we would be people who speak the truth and do not fall for the lies of the devil, uh, for he is alive and well in this world and will continue to try to subvert your word and have us question it, uh, even as he did back in the Garden of Eden. So we pray that you would help us uh, to be mindful of your word as we speak and conduct ourselves uh, in this world. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.